Hello, everyone, and welcome to the I2B2 Transmark Foundation community meeting for May 2021. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone. Uh, this meeting, this session will be recorded as usual, and the slides and the recording will be available on the website uh, within a, a day or so. The recordings are also uh, available on our YouTube channel, uh, and there are links on the website. Today's agenda, we will have uh, a few announcements and some update from Diane Keo, uh, the executive director of the foundation. And then Peter Rice will uh, go through and, and describe some of the activities and projects uh, for Transmart version 19.1 in, in our way forward. So uh, Diane, let me turn it over to you. Great, thanks Rudy. Hi everyone, welcome to uh, the May meeting. Um, we made it We made it this far into 2021. Um, you can jump to the next slide, Rudy. So we are, I'm just gonna give a, a, a quick update on a couple of things. Um, we are uh, five weeks away from the June meeting. Um, and I just wanted to, I think that the, the agenda is finally coming together um, really nicely. And I think it's gonna be a, a fantastic program. So I wanted to just quickly walk through this agenda. Um, the agenda, uh, it's still in draft form, but I think we're, we're, we're like 95% there. Um, the agenda's up on the website now and um, the registration um, link is, is there too. We'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be tweeting that and including that in our new newsletters moving forward. Uh, but the agenda, here's the agenda. So the, the first um, talk will be a report from the ITB2 Transmart global community. So the focus are, will be um, on India and a, a lot of the, um, the work that is um, starting to formulate in India to help um, gather information to, to support the, um, the COVID-19 efforts um, there. So that's some pretty um, exciting uh, activities that are moving qu pretty quickly. Um, and then there'll be a, a talk um, out of the University of Michigan about the work that um, they do around kidney disease, um, which is supported by the Transmart platform. And in particular, we're gonna be focusing on um, Africa and the effects of uh, kidney disease in Africa and, um, and, and how this, this research is, is, um, is supporting that effort. Um, so that's gonna be exciting. The next group of uh, talks will be around no surprise here, supporting COVID-19 research because so much has happened you know, over the past year and so many people are using our platforms to support this effort. So um, I, I won't go through this in detail, um, but we will we'll be, we'll be uh, having a, a group discussion about 4CE and all of the work around, uh, around that. Um, and then um, focus on um, several of the projects that have been supported out of the, um, the Dell giving um, uh, funds that we've received. Um, so that will be pretty neat. It is late breaking because we're going to be talking about some grants that hopefully we'll be, um, we'll know a little bit more about um, through NHLBI. Um, and then our keynote um, is Josh Mandel um, from Microsoft, and he is really focusing on um, fire. Um, and uh, he, I think he was, he came out of um, Harvard, um, and was one of the original folks working on the SMART um, grant that um, uh, uh, sort of developed and, and worked on those standards early on. So he's gonna talk about like where FIRE is and where it's going. Um, so I think that's gonna be a, a really fantastic talk. Um, we're gonna have a talk from Inner Systems about an alternative I2B2 implementation. I don't wanna, uh, I don't wanna spoil this, but um, they, are, they are talking about um, making their IRIS um, database, uh, which is the next version of uh, in Ensemble, for those of you who, who know um, InterSystems, available for, um, for, for the ITB2 community. So that's a work in, in progress, but it's still moving forward. Um, and then of course, our, our, the last ses session of this day will be um, our technical session, uh, talking about um, the, the roadmaps um, for our, our platforms. And then Rudy can go to the next slide. The second day will be um, uh, a report out from our working groups. Um, ontolo the ontology working group is really focusing in two areas, COVID-19 and, um, and also ontologies for um, oncology. Um, should be interesting. Um, 
Mike Mendez, the ETL group um, has got a, a fully packed um, list of things that they wanna talk about for their hour. Um, the UI working group will have a, an update. Um, and then uh, the data quality, we're gonna be talking about data quality and um, loyalty cohorts um, that has been work out of the, uh, the, um, the act from um, Jeff Plan and, um, and Michelle. Uh, and then sponsor update. So we'll have Axiomedics is, a, is one of our sponsors. Um, and then Rudy will be talking about exploring using um, knowledge graphs for uh, EH, EHR data. And then the, the, the afternoon will be focused on uh, networks, right? And, and focused on the, sh the shrine, um, the shrine component and uh, really talking about what's what's next for shrine and and um, and, and an open discussion about um, wish lists for the future. So that's so so please mark your calendars, uh, June twenty second, twenty third. Um, and again, it'd be great if you could uh, register for that um, on our website. I got one more announcement, Rudy. If you want to move to the next slide, so we do have an open. Um, seat on the board of directors. Uh, we want to thank uh, Paul Aviak for, um, for his, his role um, on the board. Actually, he was part of the board from the beginning when ITB2 and Transmart um, merged. Um, and so he's actually stepping down and we have an open seat. We have sent um, some emails out on this, but we're opening this up to the, uh, the whole community for nominations. Um, and that is the link um, that we did uh, to, to um, enter the, um, the nomination. And we're extending that till um, May 28th. So that concludes my foundation updates. And I'm going to take this over to uh, Peter Rice, who is the technical um, lead for the Transmart um, platform. Peter? Thanks very much, Diane. So Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I've uh, been given a slot to go through some of the things that we're doing with Transmart, uh, particularly with the funding that we have uh, renewed funding from Dell Technologies for this year. So next slide, please, Rudy. So we'll be covering uh, what we can do with the, uh, the Dell funding for uh, in this case, putting Transmart and I2B2 closer together and working on a common data model and accessing data across both platforms. Also update on the, uh, the COVID public data resources that we made available last year, and we have uh, funding to continue that work. Data is still coming in at uh, quite a rate. And some notes on Transmart installations that people have been asking what we can do to help ease uh, Transmart installation for particularly for new users. So I will I'll go through those. Next slide, please. So current status, we've had Transmart 19 since around this time last year, and it's been extended. So the de development version has been growing, particularly with the Dell projects that we were working with last year. Uh, so Transmart 19 was some work in Paul Avayat's group, upgraded it to a much more modern version of Grails and Java. Some more work can be done on that and get some funding. The code was very much cleaned up, um, updated all of the database drivers, our um, ETL system, all the dependencies of various libraries. Also with the Dell project last year, we updated the ITB2 schemas and added some of the, the missing uh, tables and schemas that ITB2 has and Transmart has not been using at all. Um, there's a long-standing issue in Transmart that dates were not dates and those have been changed, so they are actually now dates. Uh, for most of the data that's been loaded up from sources like GEO, there aren't any dates. So it's not so immediately helpful there, but if you're loading up your own trials, as often happens in Pharma, um, dates and times are now available and we can look at um, updating the query system to make use of them. And we've uh, made dramatic improvements to some of the UTL scripts, particularly for RNA-seq and loading very large clinical data sets. So some of those would run for days or not complete at all. Um, they now run much, much, much faster. We're talking minutes. Okay, next slide, please. So 
So we have funding again from um, Dell Technologies, um, the same funding sources as last year. We funded through to the end of January. So our goal now is to integrate ITB2 and Transmart so that we can actually load data into both ITB2 and Transmart on a common database and access the ITB2 data from Transmart and access the Transmart data from ITB2. Um, that will cause all kinds of complications, of course, but we'll see how close we can get to making everything usable. Also, there's work underway to look at uh, single sign-on methods for ITB2, and we'll try to mirror those in Transmart and try to, to link the way you sign into Transmart and ITB2 so that you can sign into one and access the other. Uh, we need to have working demos showing loading the data up, accessing the data from both platforms, hoping that we can then, for example, run some transmart analyses on ITB2 data and see how we, we can extend the usefulness there. Next slide, please. So the common data model, we did some work on this last year, but there were some gaps. Um, so I'm now working with the transmart version where we have all of the ITB2 schema um, and all of the tables, procedures, etc., loaded up into Transmart. So if you install a new Transmart um, database, it will also be suitable for running ITB2, we believe. Uh, we're putting that to the test. And that's been updated for uh, Transmart on Postgres and for Transmart on Oracle. Currently, we're testing an Oracle version 12.2, um, but I I think I have test versions of Oracle 18, 19, and 21 to run against as well. We'll try 12.2 first because that's the last supported version we had for Transmart. And then I'll look at the, the more recent ones. So anyone working with Oracle or has friends in industry working with Oracle, let me know which versions they're looking at. It would be a great help in uh, directing the testing. So we've added all the missing tables into Transmart. We've added missing procedures to Transmart. We've compared the indexes and there are a few small differences, but they're relatively minor. Um, and we can make them temporary if necessary. So there are some extra indexes in um, Transmart to make ETL run faster. There are some indexes we like to delete in Transmart to make ETL run faster and put them back afterwards. Um, but for running the database, we can leave a standard setup. I've uh, been working with the ITB2 team on which database versions we support, which is an interesting challenge. So we need to figure out which version of Postgres and which version of Oracle we're going to test the combined um, system against. Um, we'll see how we go there. Um, I'm, it's looking as though we can set up a test instance very quickly on any Oracle version or any um, Postgres version, and then just run some tests. So we'll choose one that um, is supported by both platforms nicely. Next slide, please. So we also need to, to figure out how to load data into Transmart and ITB2 with the same data. So I'm working through a list of uh, studies that we've loaded into Transmart and selecting some as a challenge for the ITB2 team to, to load into ITB2 as, as clinical data and however they want to load any other information. We want to look at the scalability of this. So ITB2 typically can run on a very large number of patients. Transmart runs on studies and studies can have a thousand patients perhaps, but it can also have a large amount of expression data, particularly when we get into RNA sequencing technologies. So we'll try to figure out how scalable these are for the number of uh, patients we can handle, the number of observations we can handle, and the number of samples that we can, we can cover in, in Transmart. We'll add some more updates to the ETL procedures. Um, so hopefully we'll have smoother ways to take a Transmart study and load it into ITB2. Um, and I'm hoping that we can load the ITB2 demo data automatically into a Transmart instance and have it sitting there ready. This is something that was there in Transmart version one and then was, uh, was dropped. So we'll put that back again. And then at the end, we need to update all the documentation, not only how to use ITB2 and Transmart, but also internally how the systems work. So how data is actually represented in ITB2 and Transmart, where they're different, and where we need to, to pay particular attention. Next slide, please. 
So on the single sign-on site, the ITB2 team are implementing uh, SAML so that you can log on through a, a SAML service provider. There is some code in Transmart, so we'll try and match that up and see how well that, that works for comparison. Transmart also has code for LDAP, Auth0, and you can just log in with the username and password stored in the database. Um, but those are all stored in Transmart. So we need to look at whether we can um, use ITB2's user management rather than having Transmart having its own set. So now that all the ITB2 tables are there in the database, we'll see if we can possibly migrate to using ITB2 to manage the Transmart logins for those sites that want to run both together. Everyone else, don't worry, we'll leave the old system in place as well, and you can just toggle which way you want to do it. Um, also looking at what the capabilities are. So if you've logged in as an admin user in Transmart, does that allow you to see everything in ITB2? <laughs> or if you log in as a general user, as a user in ITB2, can you see all the public data in Transmart? Um, we'll need to set some policies that sites can configure for what level of access they want to allow, depending on how they're set up and what kind of data they're actually loaded into the joint platforms. So I'm expecting there'll be some configurations there and some, some choices for users to make. We just need to guide them. Next slide. OK, the fun of interoperability of Transmart and ITB2. So it sounds simple. We've got a common database. So we've got all the tables that ITB2 loads into, and we've got all the tables that Transmart loads into, but the data isn't really the same. So in, uh, in ITB2, everything is just loaded. In Transmart, you look at things as a study. So you load up individual studies and you query within that study. So basically, Transmart is going to see I2B2 data as a, as a study. It's, it's kind of the whole world. And can then work with that. Um, I2B2, on the other hand, will look at Transmart, and it'll see demographics and age and everything else for every study as a separate point in the tree. So that could be interesting. We'll have to have a look at the views and how that's going to work. we we'll try to uh, to handle the authorization for who can see which parts of the tree and uh, make that work in a reasonable way. Um, there are two different systems for counting concepts in the tree, which is going to be an interesting challenge. So uh, Transmart uses clinical trials. You've got 40 patients in your trial. 23 of them show this, 17 of them show that. That's fine. In ITB2, you tend to have large numbers of patients who aren't in a trial, and so the numbers get obfuscated, and you get uh, approximate counts instead. And so depending which part of the tree you're looking at, you might have different numbers. So we'll try to figure out how best to do that. At the moment, there are different tables that store these, and it's a question of what we're going to show in the interface. Uh, another challenge for ITB2 users who look at a Transmart study, um, ITB2 users might expect to see patients, and studies in Transmart might not be patients. They might be mice. They might be rhesus monkeys. They might be cell lines. They could be kidney organoids. They could be almost anything that's been sampled. And so we, we find a way to represent those within a study in Transmart, but it's going to be interesting figuring out how best to represent those so that they look good in ITB2 as well. And we're going to have to look at how studies are curated in Transmart and find a, a way to make them all look cleanly similar and maybe merge them under the ITB2 view. Anyone who'd like to help with that curation and has opinions on how it should look is welcome to, to join in. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the issues that we have with running Transmart and ITB2 is that actually um, Transmart hijacked the ITB2 query tables and has been using them ever since version 1. And so for 19.1, that's being split. So we'll have two sets of query tables. The, the existing ones with the QT prefix will just be for query tables for ITB2. And they've been cloned with a QTM prefix instead to be used by Transmart. This means we will be able to use ITB2 to query the data and Transmart to query the data, look at how the queries are stored, and see if there's any way to 
to share the results of a query and use an ITB2 query and Transpart, you know, Transpart query and ITB2, whilst at the same time feeling confident that if you run a query in one, it's not going to break the other system by putting basically unintelligible data into its tables. So we can do a lot of work on comparing stored queries and how they work and exploring reuse. It's, it's going to be fun. And the ITB2 team will be discovering a lot about Transmart. And on the Transmart side, we'll be finding out a lot about ITB2 at the same time and uh, documenting that, which will be a great help to everybody. Next slide, please. So at the end of this, we should be able to create uh, working demos. So we'll have a common database. We will be able to populate this with ITB2 patient data. So we'll take some um, known sets of data to populate on the ITB2 side that we can work with and uh, explore how well we can access things, how scalable everything is. And the same for a set of transplant studies. And 19.1 will also have improvements to ETL. So you can just load up an entire study with uh, one command that would load up the clinical data, gene expression, RNA-seq data, et cetera, uh, plus populating the Browse tab with metadata on the study. And we're looking to add sample data as well. So everything will be there in, in one simple load. Uh, we need to define users and admin users for these uh, demo instances so that we can manage them as well as showing what general users can do and create a bunch of tutorials, I guess, as, as videos or as, as scripts for you to work through on an existing system to show the capabilities of uh, what you can do with ITB2 data in Transmart and Transmart data in ITB2. Uh, next slide, please. So we've also been working last year on the uh, COVID data resource. So we set out to annotate any um, SARS-CoV-2 studies that appeared in GEO. Uh, we also curated the existing um, SARS uh, studies from the original outbreak and MERS studies from the ongoing outbreak in the Middle East, uh, plus a number of studies for other coronaviruses and a set of related studies. So these are things like healthy lung cells for comparison or yeah, healthy um, model organism cells for comparison with the, what happens in the infected cells. So we had um, some 92 studies by the time we did the datathon last year. Um, since then, another 160 studies have appeared in the gap. We're getting five studies a week. And so we have a backlog as we, we ramp up again on this. Um, so bear with us while we work our way through those. Uh, about half of those studies, at least, will have RNA-seq data that we can use. Others will have new data types. And we'll try to uh, bring some of those other data types into Transmart if they're easily manageable. We had a, a staging server provided by Axiomedics where we've got the curated studies and the library server uh, for downloading the data into your own Transmart instances. Um, currently, it uses the development version of Transmart because there are a few extensions in there. Uh, we had a public server for the Datathon, but uh, our funding for the public server passed away. So we'll be setting up a new public server. And we also need to recurate some of the previous data. So in, in looking through it, particularly in the Datathon, we found that there have been various updates, um, publications, or other updates, extra data being added to studies. Uh, some of them added new subjects, some of them added more data per subject since it was released. So we'll go through and see if we want to add things and, and update the studies and put those out as fast as we can in the, the next month or so. Um, next slide, please. So new features appear in Transmart. Oh, I lost the slide. Well, that's coming back. New features appearing in uh, in Transmart 91. Oracle support, as I mentioned, will be supporting uh, Oracle uh, version 12 and then versions 18, 19, and 21. Uh, there are various extensions to the ETL to, to load up the Browse tab, um, aiming to load up sample data as well, and to load studies in a, a single um, load that will basically find all the data for the study and work through it in the appropriate order. 
we'll need to update the user manual with examples of, of how this works. And we're recurating um, the studies that we used in the user manual, all the example studies, so that they look cleaner. And we'll do that in uh, partnership with the ITB2 team and how best to make the ontology look. OK, uh, next slide, please. We've also been working on automated testing. So we did have this for um, back in the days of 16.3. And we've got the automated testing working again with the latest version of the test software, the latest versions of browsers. We need to add more tests. Um, so the PMC have been working on adding, uh, defining which features are most useful to have automated tests. And then we have to load some studies up as examples for them. Um, also aiming to have anything that's used in the manual as an example, should be an automated test so that we can automatically make screenshots and be sure that the manual documents things that work. Um, just a warning that there are various third party ETL utilities that people have been using, and there is no funding for maintaining those. So, unless the developers want to jump in and update them, um, that's the Transmart batch system from the Hive, which was a Groovy based system uh, for loading data, which they then um, used to load data into the, the Transmart 17 project. Um, it's also out of development now. Um, Transmart ICE from Sanofi was a, a system that just people liked it. It's a way of running the ETLs from your PC. And it then contacted the Transmart server and uploaded data to it and kicked off the ETL systems. But it used a combination of Kettle um, and an old version of the TM data loader. And it was really rather hard to keep those in step. Um, if people are interested and can provide funding, we can have a look and, and see if we can revive those. And uh, I don't think the Clarivate developers have updated TM Data Loader for a little while, but maybe they will come back to that one. So some of these have extra capabilities for clinical data, and they can be quite interesting. Um, others, people just have their data in that format and uh, are used to doing it. Um, but it should not be too difficult, and we can help to move your data back into the format for uh, the kettle data loading. It's hopefully a rearrangement of the files and a little bit of a look to see how you, if you're doing any tricks in the clinical data that only those ETL utilities supported. OK, next slide. So for installing Transmart, um, Back in the days of Transmart 16, we set up a, an attempt to have a single install script for if you had a clean new operating system, you could run it and install Transmart. Um, those have been worked on since. Um, so we now support Ubuntu 18. We're aiming to have a comprehensive set of these uh, for the next Transmart release 19.1. So we'll add Ubuntu 20. Uh, we'll drop Ubuntu 16 or 14 unless anybody really still wants to use them. We may test them, but. Um, 16 is coming out of support this year from Ubuntu. Um, adding Fedora 33 and 34 and carry on adding later ones. CentOS 7 and 8. And if people are using Red Hat, which versions of Red Hat would be useful to you? And if there's any other operating systems that people have, let us know. Also, let us know which versions of Postgres and Oracle you're using. It would be nice to know which ones we should test on to make sure we can support them. I think as we look at ITB2 and Transmart, we'll be testing multiple versions of all of these to see what we can find. One of the problems in doing the installation scripts is that other things outside our control change, particularly R, and so we'll be looking to um, add a check to see if there's any updates to the R installation scripts as it runs. So it'll you download Transmart and all the utilities, and they look to see if there's any updates and uh, add those on as well. So when you build R, which you have to do from source on Linux, it's a pain. Um, we'll check for updated versions of everything. There are minor changes to the make files, but uh, it helps a lot to be able to automatically do them. Otherwise, the first we know that it's gone wrong is when somebody tells us the install script has failed. So we'll have to test those on a regular basis and try to stay ahead of everybody. Next slide, please. The other thing we've been asked for, particularly by some European users, is to look at Docker instances. So there is a Docker instance for Transmart 16.3 that was set up by uh, Denny Fabake at, uh, at Janssen. 
and we can base something on that. Um, we need to add a few things to it. So there's some ETL systems that need to be put in. Um, it didn't support Oracle, so we need to add Oracle support for those who want it. Uh, look at which versions of Postgres we're going to support and allow you to, for example, run your own Postgres database and fine tune it rather than using the Docker instance and just point the rest of Transmart at your own instance. So you'll have multiple Dockers to install. We can provide uh, scripts to install all of them for you or allow you to select which ones you want. And we also need a lot of help in fully testing everything before we can put it into Docker. We need to make sure we've got a fully tested Transmart um, databases, ETL extensions, everything um, in order to build those. So we will see how we go. We have some volunteer testers from uh, Germany, so we can start off with them and see how we go. But anybody else who'd like to help, please do come along and uh, raise your hands at some point. Uh, next slide, please. So if you'd like to be involved in Transmart, um, the easiest way is to join the Transmart Working Group sessions. Every fourth Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, Rudy and I get together with everybody who wants to join us online and work through any Transmart issues or pass on any news of uh, what's happening. We can discuss with uh, people what their particular requirements are. Um, so a completely open session. Anyone can join in and, uh, and talk to us. Uh, also, other information is on the Transmart Wiki and uh, on the Axiomatic support site in Zendesk. We'll be adding articles on how to do various things, particularly in, in ETL. And some of the, the changes that are coming up, we'll document those in both of those places. And let us know if there's anything else you'd like to have an article on, and we can uh, add some documentation for you. The thing is, if somebody requests an article, they're also basically volunteering to test the article and make sure that it's it gives a proper explanation, doesn't have any gaps. So it's much better that way than we just write something and hope somebody will read it and trust it. We like skeptics who will actually go in and check that things work as documented and, and ask awkward questions like, so how does that really work? We're very happy to, to add things for you. OK, I think that's the last slide. Thank you. Great, thanks, Peter. Um, let's open it up. Uh, if anyone has questions for Peter uh, or for Diane, um, you can uh, post a question in the chat window. Um, but this is all open, so the, your mics you can you should be able to open your mic and just ask a question. Start to ask, and we'll try to get uh, get answers for you. Anyone have any questions? Peter, I was wondering, could you um, just clarify what, what's available right now to download and, and uh, install for Transmart? What's the latest that's available right now? The latest to download and install is, is 19.0. But as I start going through um, testing the install procedures, we can make a, a beta release of 91 available very quickly. We'll need to do that for the ITB2 Dell project anyway. Right. And there's an install script, right, that actually does the in installation? Yes. Right. And that's, we're, so there we're, links. we're Ubuntu 20, which you'll remember from the datathon, is a bit right. of a challenge. Yeah. And add it for Ubuntu 18 and let me know which other ones people really need. Um, always happy to have a volunteer to test these. In yeah. theory, that's simple. In practice, each operating system does things in a slightly different way. Yeah. The challenge in Ubuntu 20 was that, yeah, Tomcat wouldn't let R and Transmart talk to each other by default. Right. So we had to make configuration changes that nothing else is required so far. Great. It was all right. We did it in an hour or so for the data fund. Let's see. There's a question in the chat window. Um, the I2B2 CRC database required support is required to support the CRC cell. 
has there been any suggestion to move the QT tables out of the CRC database and into a, its own schema database? Well, for Transmart, we just rename, we just copy them to QTM, but I did notice that and wondered about it. Yeah. Um, Transmart wouldn't really mind if they moved somewhere else. I'm not sure the ITB2 team would have to answer on how easily they could move them somewhere. I'm not sure I see anybody. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think, um, I mean, Jeff is out and I don't see Mike on, I don't know if anybody else from the ITB2 community could uh, answer that question. We certainly can take that back to, uh, right. to the team. Yeah, I just thought they could go into the metadata schema instead, but yeah, Transmart doesn't mind. <laughs> it's a question for ITB2 is how easy that is. Okay. Okay, anyone else have any questions? Well, actually, on that subject, one of the issues right. is that Transmart only uses the CRC database, and the ITB2 guys would like us to be able to use <laughs> other others as well, and not just we just load everything up as ITB2 demo data, and we need to be able to use some alter alternatives. Otherwise, we won't see any ITB2 data that's been loaded differently. I, I do want to mention we, we do have um, uh, a few um, slots left for the June meeting. So if you have use cases that you'd like to present um, or if, if you have suggestions for topics, um, certainly like Mark, that question about the, the CRC cell that it, you know, during our technical um, meeting the, on, on the end of the first day, we definitely have enough time during that session to have open discussions um, about these types of things. So, so certainly, um, and, and the, the following day, the second day too, the, the networking day is, um, is not jam packed. It's probably two and a half hours worth of uh, time to, to focus on, you know, the shrine and, and um, you know, and network support. So we'll, we'll definitely, we wanna hear from the community. So we're, we're trying to, we're trying to get people to bring their questions and, and have a, you know, have a discussion there as well. And, and certainly if people have topics for these meetings, if, if there's like anything at all that you want to, um, you know, highlight and, and have us uh, really, you know, uh, bring to the community and, and talk about it, we, we can certainly do that as well. Any other things, or does everybody want 15 minutes back to, the, to their day? I bet 15 minutes before lunch would be delightful, because I'm sure Zoom meetings are part of everybody's life, which is getting a little old. <laughs> Hopefully next year we'll be back to in-person um, symposiums. So, all right. Rudy, any last words? Yeah, I think we're all set. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for attending. And uh, the recording of this will be available within a day or two. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.